The book of Leviticus is a book of laws. There's a whole section of Leviticus dedicated to the laws that governed sacrifices. There's a whole section in Leviticus on the laws that governed the priesthood of the people who would carry out those sacrifices. There's a whole section of laws which details ceremonial purity, how to keep oneself ritually clean so as to be able to participate in the ceremonies of the tabernacle. There's a whole section of laws called the Holiness Code, which governs everything from relationships to skin diseases to your diet to farming practices and to what fibers your clothing is to be made from. And then there's the final section of laws that concerns offerings and vows that one might make to God from occasion to occasion. It's not a storybook, which if you're reading the Bible from cover to cover, this means that Leviticus can hit you like, like a ton of bricks. The first two books, Genesis and Exodus, are chock full of stories, great stories. But Leviticus isn't a storybook, which is why the little story in Leviticus chapter 24 seems totally out of place. Right after a section on the laws governing the showbread or the, the bread of presence, which was to be placed on the table in the outer sanctum of the tabernacle, there's a story about the son of an Israelite woman. It goes like this. A man whose mother was an Israelite and whose father was an Egyptian came out among the people of Israel. And the Israelite woman's son and a certain Israelite began fighting in the camp. The Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name in a curse, and they brought him to Moses. Now, his mother's name was Shelomith, daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan, and they put him in custody until the decision of the Lord should be made clear to them. The Lord said to Moses, saying, Take the blasphemer outside the camp, and let all who were within hearing lay their hands on his head and let the whole congregation stone him and speak to the people of Israel, saying, Anyone who curses God shall bear the sin. One who blasphemes the name of the Lord shall be put to death. The whole congregation shall stone the blasphemer. Aliens as well as citizens, when they blaspheme the name, shall be put to death. Anyone who kills a human being shall be put to death. Leviticus 24, 10 through 17. Notice here that when the man blasphemes, he blasphemes against the name. The text of the Bible won't put the word blaspheme next to God's name. Also notice that the text goes out of its way not to name the man who does the blaspheming. He's the Israelite woman's son whose father was an Egyptian. Not naming characters can sometimes help make the person feel like, like an everyman. He could be anyone. He could be you. He could be me. And notice that the exact mechanism of the blasphemy is unclear. We aren't let in on exactly what the man said. It isn't clear whether he uttered a profanity whether he made a false statement using the name of God, or whether as he, as a half-Egyptian, made some sort of bold-faced defamatory statement against the God of the Israelites. We simply don't know. We do know that the punishment for the blasphemy was death. And we see in this third book of the Bible, the third commandment broken. This is one of the commandment violations in the long pattern of commandment violations, which, which really makes the pattern stick out because Leviticus isn't a storybook, but right there in the middle of the 24th chapter is a story. And this story just so happens to be a story from completely out of left field, which details the breaking of the third commandment. When we're through our journey 
through the early books of the Bible. And we look back on the story of all the commandment violations. This is going to be one of them that really seals the deal on this pattern being something to take notice of. Here's a question to think about. Now that we're at the third commandment broken in the third book, what are you making of this pattern so far?